you don't want to pause yes, any more. identification, please. You have no right to look at my identification. I do. You're a witness to an offence. You're required to provide me your name. Where's your identification? My identification is all over. You've got a fence in your name. Senior Constable David Power of the Crime Target Team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Senior Constable, who's your uh, senior, who's, who's your boss? My boss is just over there. Alright, well I'll talk to him. Yeah. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah, and neither am I. I'm trying to be straight with you. He doesn't want to speak to me, Sergeant. <laughs> Move. He won't provide me with his footage now. Sergeant, my name is Miles Morgan. I'm from NITV and SBS News. This is being recorded. This officer wants to seize my camera. I don't, he, I don't believe he has the right, so I'm not going to let him. I will provide the footage in due time. Right now, I'm going to let him. What are you shaking for, Miles? What am I shaking for? Yeah. Help us make me uncomfortable. No, what was that, Miles? You're trying to stand me up? No, I'm just saying you're shaking and you're alright. Well, this guy's been trying to intimidate you into giving him footage. I've seen him, have, I've seen him talking to you, Miles. You've seen him talking, but you haven't heard what he's been saying. Are you okay? I'm fine. But you're shaking almost uncontrollably. Are you okay? No, I don't think I'm shaking at all. I feel quite calm, actually, Sergeant. You are. Your face is twitching really badly. Well, I've got to say, this is uh, unusual for me. But I'm saying, are you okay? We've got first aid down oh, here if you need I'm help. absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine. It's been a very exciting day for everyone involved. Well, I don't think I've any, ever seen anyone's face twitch like that, though, that's all. <laughs> I'm glad I can be the first one. It's a Commonwealth asset, that camera. It is owned by SBS. So that's been used for a private purpose. It would appear so, that's wouldn't it? a bit of a misuse of Commonwealth uh, No, officer, it isn't. Asset. It is, it's got a Commonwealth I work for asset. National Indigenous Television News. I was covering an Indigenous march for which, Indigenous which would make service. you, Which would make you a Commonwealth employee. Indeed. Ergo. Would you be uh, behaving in contravention of the uh, common... What's the word for it? Can I please have all of your identifications? My name is Station Sergeant Adrian Michael Craft, and my badge number is 4948. I'm the officer in charge of emergency management planning and ACT policing. Thank you, sir. And what's your identification? Sergeant Mark Steele, 10075. OK, I don't see a problem here. This guy wants this officer would like my footage. I don't wish to give it to him. You haven't hassled anyone else for their footage. So I would like to leave now, as I believe I'm free to do. If you have reason to arrest me, you might as well get it over and done with, but I'm going to be recording the whole thing. No, is unfortunately, stupidity is not illegal. Fair enough. I'll have be right then. I still request a copy of your footage. I would like your business card then, and I will be happy to give you a call later today after I talk to my bosses. I'll grab your details. Like I said earlier, you're a witness to a Fed, so you're required to provide See, them to me. an interesting philosophical juxtaposition here. Do you have one, some identification? One you cannot use card? the law as a oh, weapon. No, you, you need to provide us with the details. Please. I'm more than happy to, if he provides me with his. I provide it. Senior Constable David Power, 10832. What's your number? 10832. I'm a Wadi Wadi man of the Darawal Nation. I work for NITV News. You're not taking that down, officer. Wadi Wadi man of the Darawal yeah, okay. Nation. I work for I National don't Indigenous see that that's Television News. Do you think you overreacted in today's march, officer? No, I just know that I've had a complaint from one of my members that she's been assaulted. Right, and we you believe know. you've you've got footage of that, so you know that's why we do. require a copy of and it. Okay? Look, I would be happy to help. I would be happy to help. You may even have footage of the damage to the Commonwealth of property that's been occasioned right there. Would you care to film that? I do sincerely yeah, yeah, yeah. apologise for the slight tear in your jacket. Thank you very much. Wouldn't describe it as slight. It can't be slightly pregnant. Well, working for the. The police force of Canberra, I'm sure you have many fluoro jackets, officer. No, no, I don't, just the one. Oh, yes. I'm sorry to hear that. We're big on effective use of Commonwealth resources so and Commonwealth SBS. assets. That's why I'm doing it all. Yes, 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 we can see some of the quality in that. By well, the fact that uh, Commonwealth asset is being used for private personal purposes. As I say again, it's not for private purposes. This is going into a news story. It's part of our Anzac Day coverage. Oh, really? What would, what would that story be? pays us to tell the stories of Indigenous Australia. No, the Australian taxpayer pays you to create a fair and equitable coverage of events. I believe today's been pretty fair. I was on both sides of the road, officer, and I think both sides committed wrong today. But that's just my personal opinion. Just going through the process, I say again, I have no criminal record. I haven't committed any crime. I'm more than happy to provide both of you, or all three of you, with vision of today's events, as long as I get clearance. One, four, go ahead. 
What exactly did you come to film today? I came to feel a peace. I came to film a peaceful demonstration. A peaceful demonstration on behalf of the Indigenous peoples of Australia. Who what's, simply what's, what's today? What's customarily celebrated on? Well, not celebrated, but commemorated on the 25th of April. I'm trying to answer your question. If you'd let me finish, I'm not interrupting you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sure. Enlighten me with the rest of your answer. I would like to film today's Indigenous protest. Yeah. The Indigenous people of this country are trying to mark. Yeah the sometimes deliberate killings of their people in the past 230 years. Okay. It was a peaceful protest and it got out of hand. Oh, I wouldn't describe it as peaceful, but... It was peaceful until the police stopped the protesters from marching. Oh. I would argue that. Good evening, Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my card. Thank you, officer. I do appreciate it. That's okay. Life. What was your phone number, mate? The Aboriginal man, who was temporarily arrested during the ugly Anzac Day clash in Canberra, says he will take legal action against police. And the Australian Federal Police has confirmed it will investigate the circumstances surrounding an officer pulling out and nearly using his taser on a protester. Former submariner Fred Hooper wanted to mark the frontier wars and lay a wreath on Anzac Day. But police didn't let him, saying he was breaching the peace. I served this country. I'm just telling you now. I served, I served on behalf of all the black fellas as well in this country. Okay, okay, and I'm not allowed to march. You're the one just causing the problem. I'm not allowed to lay this wreath. Mr Hooper says he now wants to take legal action because he felt discriminated against during Saturday's march. Well, I think I was targeted because I wouldn't toe their line. I think that, you know, we, we wanted to march in honour of all servicemen um, who served and, and died in all wars, including the, the undeclared frontier wars. And he isn't happy with how some police officers treated him and fellow demonstrators. There were certainly racial tones from, from certain officers that were there. I think that um, certain comments from certain officers that were there um, on the day were, were derogatory. The march turned ugly when police tried to arrest one man. One officer nearly used his taser and the AFP says it's now reviewing what it calls its use of force. Fred Hooper says it doesn't need to happen next year. The RSL, which took charge of this year's parade, just needs to recognise the violence between settlers and Indigenous people and commemorate it on Anzac Day. Aboriginal people served in every single war this country um, was was involved with, you know, since 1788. So I think the RSL is, uh, is the last bastion of the white Australia policy. Miles Morgan, NITV News. The Australian Federal Police has found one of its officers breached its code of conduct in dealing with one of our journalists earlier this year. The incident occurred during NITV News coverage of the Frontier Wars Remembrance March on Anzac Day. Chris Rowe reports. This ugly scuffle happened on Anzac Day this year. <laughs> Frontier War activists at the rear of the traditional Anzac Day march had been prevented by police from going any further. As the protesters walked away, police stopped our political reporter Miles Morgan, who was covering the Anzac Day events. Police said they'd seized the camera as it was potentially evidence of an offence. He won't provide me with this footage now. Sergeant, my name is Miles Morgan from NITV and SBS News. This is being recorded. This officer wants to seize my camera. I don't believe he, I don't believe he has the right, so I'm not going to let him. I will provide the footage in due time. Right now I'm going to let him. What are you shaking for, Miles? Our journalist was told that he was misusing his camera despite repeatedly saying that he was a working journalist. An official investigation by the AFP's professional standards team has found that one officer did breach the AFP's code of conduct, but it says the other two members were not found to have breached the code. The AFP won't investigate the matter any further. Chris Rowe, NITV News.
And the AFP has made a statement about the incident to NITV News this afternoon. The agency says it has created a one-day Indigenous cultural awareness training program. It says the program aims to train officers on the experiences of Indigenous people and how it will affect their interaction with First Nations peoples. This is NITV News with Natalie Armand. Good evening. It was meant to be a day of respect and remembrance, but police and Aboriginal activists were involved in a violent scuffle at the centre of Anzac commemorations. Protesters were told they were marching illegally and a senior officer threatened them with a taser as they tried to mark the frontier wars. The centenary of Anzac challenged by a forgotten history. <laughs> It didn't start out that way on Anzac Parade in Canberra, with all eyes on current and former defence members taking part in the annual Anzac Day march. At the very end of the ceremony, a group of demonstrators wanted to mark the frontier wars and the violence committed against Indigenous people over the last two centuries. As the English settlers colonised Australia and pushed further inland, conflict was common with Indigenous people and it's estimated thousands were killed. Those commemorating the frontier wars knew they were marching illegally and police escorted them along the way. That's what they're saying is that, you know, we're, um, we're trespassing and that uh, we don't have a permit to march, whereas the RSL uh, have got a permit to march up this um, esplanade. The idea was to march peacefully for a few hundred metres and stop at the police blockade. When we get up there, we will be respectful. We'll stay on the, keep, maintain the high moral ground and we just spread across, right across that street um, up there and just hold the banners and flags. Once the group was stopped, the chanting began. It ain't my country, don't you chant? Tell me to shut up. It's not. Why is this treaty with me? You have no paper. The police said certain protesters were now breaching the peace. And we okay. explain to you, this right. land is under the control of the RSL at the moment. Well, that's fine. If you're not part of an authorised march, they do not let you on well, there. Well, okay. I'm a member, yeah. I am also a member okay. of the RSL. And then the uneasy standoff exploded. As police tried to remove this man, another police officer is pushed out of the way as people try to stop the police arresting protesters. Then a senior police officer pulled out his taser and threatened Lawrence Coglin, the keeper of the flame at the Aboriginal tent embassy. With the crowd building and many cameras, the police called for backup and asked marchers to move on. This is the hundred days of the day. Well, we tell the people to be silent. No, we tell them to be silent. No, you tell them to be silent. You can move away, thanks, okay? With the scuffle over, police threatened to seize the NITV News camera, saying the vision was now evidence. You haven't hassled anyone else for their footage, so I would like to leave now, as I believe I'm free to do. If you have reason to arrest me, you might as well get it over and done with, but I'm going to be recording the whole thing. No, is unfortunately, stupidity is not illegal. And police questioned why NITV News was filming the march. Yeah, that's been used for private purpose. Would appear so, that's wouldn't a bit of a misuse of Commonwealth... Uh, no, officer, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's got a Commonwealth... I work for National Indigenous Television News. I was covering an Indigenous march for which, Indigenous which would make service. you, Which would make you a Commonwealth employee. Indeed. Ergo... Would you be uh, behaving in contravention by the fact that uh, Commonwealth Asset is being used for private personal purposes? As I say again, it's not for private purposes. This is going into a news story. It's part of our Anzac Day coverage. Oh, really? What would, what would that story be? It us to tell the stories of Indigenous Australia. Miles Morgan, NITV News. In the end, they did not seize our footage, but our reporter has just received a response from the Federal Police. They confirmed the deployment of a taser, saying that all incidents where ACT policing officers utilise a use of force option are reviewed in accordance with AFP governance and we'll put the complete statement on our website. NITV has also called on the Federal Police to apologise and we have lodged a formal complaint for further investigation. The full exchange between the police and our reporter is on our Twitter and Facebook pages.
The union representing Australia's journalists says there are still unanswered questions from the Australian Federal Police over its treatment of an NITV journalist in April. The MEAA says police also need better training in how to deal with the media. An internal investigation found an AFP officer breached standards after a march to remember the frontier wars. Miles Morgan reports. Protesters in Canberra marched to remember the violent history of Australia's colonisation on Anzac Day. It ended in a violent scuffle. Then police said they'd seize an NITV camera which filmed the event. So that's been used for a private purpose? It appears so I wouldn't... a bit of a misuse of Commonwealth... Uh, no, officer, it isn't. Asset. It is, it's got a Commonwealth I work for asset. National Indigenous Television News. I was covering an Indigenous march for which, Indigenous... Which would, make you, which would make you a Commonwealth employee. Indeed. Ergo, would you be uh, behaving in contravention of the uh, common... What's the word for it? We were pleased to see that, you know, an investigation had been completed uh, and that uh, there'd been a finding that uh, one of the officers involved in that incident uh, had been found to have breached procedures, uh, but there are still unanswered questions as far as we're, we're concerned. An AFP professional standards investigation found one of the officers involved in the incident did breach the AFP's code of conduct. It says he was discourteous in speaking to NITV. The AFP says a few months after the incident, it implemented a one-day training program for its officers on Indigenous cultural issues. We would also like to see some training uh, implemented for AFP officers to explain to them the role of a media uh, uh, in democracy because what was disturbing in that incident was the fact that uh, those officers seemed to be under the impression that NITV were there pursuing some sort of personal agenda. The Alliance says these scenes send the wrong message to working journalists in an increasingly unstable time for the Australian media. With the, all the national security legislation that's been passed, uh, data retention laws that have been passed, the language about journalists from our parliament is that there's some sort of threat to security. Miles Morgan, NITV News.